Hello, Internet. I'm me. And this is My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 2, Episode, I think, 18. Or 15. I could totally be off on this. I'm not good with the numbers. And if my camera seems a little tilted, it might be because I'm trying out new things with the camera. And during this recording, my camera might fall off my computer. But don't worry, though. If it doesn't, I don't have to do a retake. Anywho, this episode is about Pinkie Pie taking care of babies. Could you think of anybody more suited for that? I could. I could think of plenty of people to take care of babies other than Pinkie Pie. But I digress. This episode is actually a very good episode to me. It uh, actually got... Uh, usually I watch these episodes three or four times to just get a good review out of them. This one I watched it about three times in a row, and then I remembered I had to do a review on it. So that speaks volumes in how good this episode really was to me. This episode actually starts out with the birth of two babies, a pegasus named Pancake and a unicorn named Carrot. No, Pumpkin Pie. Damn, why do I think Carrot Cake? They are the, the two twins of the couple Mr. and Mrs. Cake of which Pinkie Pie, I think, works under, lives with, uh, it's not really clear, but I know she works for him, who owned the Sugar Cubes Corner. Now, how two Earth ponies, you know, came across with a Pegasus and a Unicorn is a little complicated to me because I wanted to go into genetics, and I thought about it, and I'm like, well... I've always been questioning what happens if, you like, the old remnants were unicorns or pegasus. Would their recessant genes come back into play in future generations? Or would the... Or when crossbreeding happened, would you actually get an alicorn or just a recessive or a uh, more strong and prominent gene take over the actual genetics of the pony, leading it to one way or the other. But I'm not here to talk about genetics, I'm here to talk about My Little Pony. <laughs> but anyway, uh, long story short, two Earth Ponies have a Pegasus and a Unicorn. And of course, after one month, and Pinkie Pie wanting to party with them all the time, um, Mr. and Mrs. Cake remember that they need to go somewhere and they need a babysitter. Now, of course, because Pinkie Pie has been playing around with them for a whole month, they automatically think to give the babies to Pinkie Pie. <laughs> no. They actually have a brain. So they go to the other main six to try to see if they can take care of the babies. Unfortunately, they're all a little too busy. Rainbow Dash going off to go watch the Wonder Bolts. Probably again, third time in the month or so. Twilight Sparkle is too busy studying, or summarizing reports on the reports that she's given to Celestia, which I don't think she needs, and she's read them all. <laughs> uh, Applejack is bucking apples to get to escape from caterpillars, to stop caterpillars from eating them. Uh, Fluttershy is taking a uh, freaking angel out on a picnic. Again, we all see who wears the pants in that relationship. And Rarity, of course, just just doesn't want to do it. Which I actually commend her for. You at least have honesty. I'm not doing that. <laughs> anyway, uh, of course, they're left with no choice but to use Pinkie Pie. Which actually kind of sort of would make sense if Pinkie Pie wasn't all party and not really any work. But eh, you could do worse. So they leave Pinkie Pie with their with their Pegasus boy pound cake and their little unicorn girl, uh, Pumpkin Pie. I don't know why I have trouble remembering that. And as the name suggests, Pound Cake likes pounding things and hitting things. And of course, Carrot Cake, I'm sorry, Pumpkin Pie, for some reason likes eating things. Which isn't uncommon for most babies, but still. That baby just likes to eat a lot of crack. <laughs> a, a lot of crap, not crack. <laughs> Anywho, as the day progresses, she tries to take care of the babies with the way she normally does, just playing with them more. And she actually realizes that, oh no, I can't really do this with um, just playing around. I actually have to take care of the babies. I have to earn the responsibility. 
And she actually figures this out when Twilight Sparkle, in the middle of all this mess that um, Pinkie Pie has been in, Twilight Sparkle actually gets done with her work and actually decides to come over to help Pinkie Pie take care of the babies. And, of course, when she says it's a respons big responsibility, Pinkie Pie realizes that she has actually been trying to play with the babies more than actually take them as a serious responsibility. Therefore, actually take making her take charge and try to get these babies to understand behave and actually try to be an authoritarian figure and yet a friendly figure in this relationship of the babies as they're learning to fly and use magic and causing a lot of havoc. And there is a badass Requiem for a Dream reference in here where the little pig or pound cake actually is walking on the ceiling. It's a baby walking on the ceiling and uh, for those of you who have seen Requiem for a Dream, that is actually a hallucination, I think, from when a character goes from withdrawal of drugs. So I don't know what kid would get that reference. But hey, I got the reference, and I was pretty happy that the writers actually wrote that in there. This is coming from a writer who put a Tenacious D song in a Pony fanfic. Anywho. Uh... And then at the end of the day, of course, Pinkie Pie, you know, cleans up the mess, makes sure that Pound Cake and Carrot Cake actually, you know, behave after she breaks down and cries. And then Pound Cake and Carrot Cake, being the surprisingly super smart babies they are, understand Pinkie Pie's pain and just kind of settle it down and show her the respect that she's been trying to give to them. And this is pretty good. Um, like I said, these babies are amazingly smart for figuring all this stuff out, like how to fly or how to use magic, even though you could, you know, chalk that up to instinct. But then again, her, them responding to Pinkie Pie's crying and also trying to cheer them up probably came from, like, you know, impressionism from where whenever they cried, she would pour a bag of flour over her body to make them laugh so at the end when she starts crying they do the same and so I I don't know how to how to gauge their brain power I I don't know but uh, they pre seemed pretty freaking smart for babies one month old babies yeah they're pretty freaking smart to me this coming from a guy who takes care of babies on a regular basis in a nursery so uh, but other than that, this episode was fantastic on all levels. Due to the fact that Pinkie Pie is a comedic genius in this episode. Even though some of the jokes are clearly made to make her not funny. Like her stand-up act. And um, that she, the fact that she tried to make babies laugh by using stand-up comedy <laughs> is just funny in and of itself. And near the end, where uh, Pound Cake learns to fly and Car uh, Pumpkin Pie learns to use magic, the slapstick humor kicks in almost to a Looney Tunes level and Tom and Jerry level to where it was actually timing and timing and timing to where the slapstick comedy was natural and progressive and actually very funny in it. And how um, Pinky reacts to actually the slapstick comedy is very good. To where she's like being dragged across the whole sugar cube corner getting pies thrown in her face and she eats it and and we get classic pinky pie where she just eats it off her face like a cartoon and just goes mmm boysenberry and i'm just kind of like that's pinky pie that's how she would react in a slapstick comedy it wasn't a generic thing where you would have slapstick comedy and you have that oh boy at the end of it it would actually had the character of, it had slapstick comedy and character in it. This is the thing that most people do miss when they write slapstick comedy or have slapstick comedy in a show or movie. That they have the slapstick where you see somebody get hit in the nuts, but you don't have the comedy. Where a character reacts the way they would react. The way their character has been based. Not just, he got kicked in the nuts, that's funny, and now he's... I don't know, going, oh, dude, I got kicked in the nuts. No, he's actually acting the way his character would act. And that's what I get with Pinkie Pie, and this is what makes the slapstick comedy so good. It's her trying to be so good so hard, but actually being forced against it by these babies. And that actually makes the slapstick comedy a lot more genuine and a lot more 
heartfelt and actually a lot more funny. There's, of course, fourth wall breaking with Pinkie Pie again, where she actually does clone herself in the middle of the episode, and I was just like, mind fuck, thank you. <laughs> and honestly, even though Mr. and Mrs. Cake aren't in this episode for very long, their presence is actually very well felt and actually very funny. It actually, they actually act like real parents and actually worrying about their babies and actually trying to trying their best to run a business and take care of their children at the same time. Actually being smart enough not to use Pinkie Pie as their first resource as babysitting, which is probably the smartest thing you could probably do. And, jeez. Uh, I love the excuse, and another thing, I love the excuses from all the main six to not babysit these kids. And from actual legitimate excuses to Rainbow Dash and Rarity where you can kind of see it's an excuse to get away from babysitting to Rarity. Like Rainbow Dash is like, oh, I got to go uh, go to a Wonderbolts uh, show in, in this afternoon, so I can't really do it. And you're just like, that's is that an excuse? Or are you actually going somewhere? You can, you can see that like almost in their character of where... You can see it as an excuse or an actual thing. And of course, Rarity just coming out and saying, no, 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 I'm not doing that. And as you can tell by my rambling, I actually do really love this episode. The writing was so strong in this episode, and the com comedy was just fantastic. I actually did watch it two times, three times in a row without even realizing that uh, my brother just passed right over there <laughs> but um uh, without even realizing that i was going to do a review for this i just was watching it to enjoy it and that was something very fantastic to me it didn't feel like it was a 30 minute episode even though it's technically 22 minutes but it didn't feel like a 22 minute episode it felt like a five minute episode that i wanted to see more of i liked this episode i love this episode i love how all the characters personalities are integrated in this episode and we need to see more of this in not only this show, but like in every show. I mean, My Little Pony does this pretty well, but geez, this one was pitch perfect. I give it a 10 out of 10. Yes, 10 out of 10, solid, 100%. The babies were cute. Pinkie Pie was funny. The back characters were good. Everybody was themselves. Everybody actually contributed to the episode in one way or another, and nobody was useless. There were no useless bits. Everything was pretty funny in its own right. So I give this episode a good solid 10 out of 10 and a must watch to any bronies out there or anybody who's wanting to, you know, just enjoy themselves on a good episode. So until next time, y'all, peace.